Hey, Pickens chemistry students. So let's summarize what we've discovered about electrons from experimental evidence. And so, of course, Bohr knew about the absorption and the emission spectra. He worked from light, he worked from energies of light to piece together the idea of the energy levels of the atom where the electrons exist. But we've also been able to see now some data from photoelectron spectra, which is a newer technique relatively, but it does give us some more experimental evidence from which we can build up an understanding of where the electrons exist in the atom and how, they're, um, how they exist in the atom to lead us into ways that we might have to try and describe them. And so if I was speaking as an electron, I might tell you about myself that I, the electron, exist in an orbital and that an orbital is a region of space of a certain energy that can house two electrons. And so as we saw with, say, oxygen, those orbitals can only hold two electrons, but there might be more than one orbital in a given shell, and there might even be more than one orbital of, uh, orbital of a particular type from one of the blocks on the periodic table. So no matter what kind of orbital this is, no matter what the shape or size is of the orbital, each single orbital can only hold two electrons. I as the electron can be described by what are called four quantum numbers. And we've already seen two of these at least in use. N is called the principal quantum number. But this is really like the shell number. So when we talk about the energy level of the electrons or we talk about the shell, that's what this one is. The L is called the azimuthal quantum number, and this determines the type of orbital or the block. So this is S block or P block or D or F are the other blocks on the periodic table. So here is the S block. Here is the P block. Here is the D block. And these two rows out on the bottom are the F block. So one, two, three, four, et cetera, for the shell, S, P, B, F, et cetera, for the L or the azimuthal quantum number or the block. And the M sub L is the magnetic quantum number. And this is gonna be the specific orbital. In other words, like, which blank those electrons are in. And then M sub S is the spin quantum number. This is either up or down, and it can have values of plus or minus one half. And we'll come back to those. The other thing I might tell you about myself, I, the electron, when excited, and that excitation could come from heat or electricity or being hit by light, can jump to another orbital. And that jump happens if there is room in the orbital. So if the other orbital is full, I as the electron cannot move into that space. There has to be a space where I can go, even if I have the right amount of energy to go up there. And that's the second piece. I have to have the exact amount of energy for the jump. No more and no less. And this, when you have an exact amount of energy, this is said to be quantized energy. In other words, it only comes in certain amounts. And this is really where we get the idea of the quantum nature of the electron. It comes from this idea that energy has to be quantized. Finally on here, I, the electron, if given a choice, will always go to the lowest energy orbital available by giving away energy, usually in the form of lighter heat, which is why when you see an electron get excited, that electron can then fall through a series of steps to come back to the original state. Each of those might give off light, but they don't have to. There are other ways the atom or the electron can lose energy. Heat is one of those. That's really a topic for another class. One of the nice things though about these particular quantum numbers, the way that we use them is that a unique set 
describes each electron in the atom. And so in any given atom, it has to have a unique set of four quantum numbers. The allowed values for these, the allowed values for n, are positive integers. In other words, as I showed above, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Okay, the allowed values for L are integers from negative n to positive n. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Again, integers from zero up. So we are allowed to have zero, one, two, etc. But the limitation here is that L has to be equal to N minus one. That's the highest it can be is what I should really say. So zero, one, two, all the way up to N minus one. So if n is four, then L is allowed to be zero, one, two, or three. M sub L, the magnetic quantum number, this is the one that is allowed to be integers from negative L to positive L. And so again, if n is four, if L happened to be three, then M sub L could be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, and positive three. Notice that it's seven wide, if that represents seven different orbitals and every orbital can hold two electrons, then this represents 14 electrons and where do we see 14 elements across? We see that down in the F block. So an L equals three would be associated with an F, an L equals two would be associated with the D, an L equals one would be associated with a P, and an L equals zero would be associated with S. These do go higher, but we don't need to know about those for high school or even college level chemistry. These other levels are more theoretical and they happen when you get up to higher energies. The highest we see for ground states of atoms on the periodic table is the F. So come back for the next video to get some stronger connections between this and the periodic table.